There are so many theories and possibilities that have been created by the Hogwarts Legacy fandom. The cleverest and most substantiated is one about Merlin. After all, Hogwarts Legacy has provided us with many Merlin connections that strengthen this theory. The most significant one being our ability to wield ancient magic. What we don't know is how Merlin connects to the main storyline. But the more I researched all the Hogwarts Legacy material to find more information about Merlin, the more I started to notice connections to a great sorceress, Merlin's greatest enemy, the Enchantress Morgana Le Fay. But who was Morgana? Why was she secretly present in this game? Are we Merlin's herald who will fight Morgana's dark forces to protect some legacy left by Merlin? Welcome back to the Aura Division. I am your host Sly, and I am ready to unveil more Hogwarts Legacy secrets. The Chocolate Frog Wizarding card states that Morgana Le Fay was Merlin's greatest rival. She was known by many names, Morgan Le Fay, Morgana the Fairy, or simply Morgana. Morgana was an extremely powerful witch, first exposed by the Arthurian legend as King Arthur's half-sister and Merlin's arch-enemy. In this short video, we see the statue of a hooded woman in a ruin. The statue stands on a broken platform and it's surrounded by overgrown vines and thorns. Signs that indicate this location is either hidden or abandoned. The soundtrack resembles one of Mozart's masterpieces, Lacrimosa. And Lacrimosa is Latin for weeping, referring to the mourning of the Virgin Mary, also called Our Lady of Sorrows. Like the Virgin Mary, Morgana was also represented as a deity, the Divine Mother. Is this a clever play portraying Morgana's downfall by those who worshipped her? The Weeping of Morgana? You can also spot a beam of light coming from above. This gives this statue an aura of spiritual elevation and power. Behind her head, we can see some birds flying in very small circles, almost as if they are bound to remain there for eternity. The same statue can also be spotted in many other scenes in Hogwarts Legacy, indicating she has a prominent role in the game, very much like her enemy Merlin. The main difference in this statue is that it seems she is holding on to a missing object or staff of sorts, as if it was removed. Is it just broken on the ground, or is it part of a quest puzzle? If so, who was this witch who defied Merlin? The Arthurian legends are comprised of many different sources varying from village tales to famous published works. Each author told the tale in their own perspectives, which led to the creation of contradicting stories over the past years. Some stories portray Morgana Le Fay as the evil sorceress in Merlin's greatest rival, while others confirm Morgana was in fact a very good witch and a healer who helped many. According to the Wizarding World's history, however, Morgana took the evil mantle of being a dark sorceress and Merlin's arch enemy, matching the later translated versions approved by the Church. The famous book series Lancelot Grail accounted the Arthurian tales filled with many connections to Christianity and its values. Due to its religious motives, the publishers made all of the pagan characters evil. Morgana was one of them. In spite of Morgana's departure from being a good healer, represented as this evil witch, Morgana Le Fay ends up helping King Arthur after he is mortally wounded and brought to Avalon for help, Morgana's island and domain. There, she put King Arthur into an eternal slumber to be risen again when humanity needed him the most. So, even after being treated as an evil being, Morgana Le Fay ends up saving King Arthur regardless. Morgana's duality, like in the stories, could also be represented in Hogwarts Legacy where our characters could have the option to join her forces or Merlin's. When we look back at the statue, we see this duality also. Over to the right, we can spot the overgrown thorny vines representing her dark and evil side, while on the left, we can see a very strong beam of light coming from above that represents her connection to nature and goodness. So are we going to have to choose between being part of the Order of Merlin or the Order of Morgana? This would easily describe our two possible endings in a game. 
the good legacy or the dark legacy. Now, remember I mentioned Morgana bewitched King Arthur into a slumber so that he could be risen once again when the world needed him the most? Like many aspects of the legends, many metaphors were used to describe or even hide the truth. What if Morgana Le Fay created an ancient magic bond, like that of Lily Potter, where death brings continuity to life, to power? It is possible that Morgana canonized Arthur's power and it was passed down from generation to generation until it awakened in our avatar due to some important event, like the death of our parents perhaps. Is our avatar the hero who rises to help humanity? In the Wizarding World lore, the dark sorceress Morgana was the queen of the mystical islands of Avalon a collection of smaller islands located around Great Britain. Morgana was said to possess unparalleled knowledge in the dark arts. It was also known that Morgana Le Fay was an animagus, or animagus, who could transform into a bird. Interestingly enough, what do we see flying in an eternal circular pattern behind the alleged statue of Morgana? Birds. The connections Hogwarts Legacy makes to Merlin are easily spotted throughout the trailers released. Morgana's depictions, on the other hand, are very subtle, and some even shrouded in mystery. But I believe I may have uncovered her presence and her connection to Merlin and the story. In the behind-the-scenes trailer, Hogwarts Legacy gives us many images of whom I believe to be Morgana. We start by looking at the tapestry. The center focus of this image is a blonde hooded woman with her hands out, depicting the pose of a savior. Her demeanor is that of an approachable person who is calling out to the observer to come forth and follow her. Behind her, we can spot what could be the Great Tree of Avalon, a magical tree that connects the earth to the heavens. This tree was also protected by the seven creatures that lived in its roots, creatures like the ones we see depicted on this image. Additionally, the sap of this great tree, known as Elano, is a liquid that has the power to create life itself, to create magic, eternal magic, also known as the eternal fire. Interestingly enough, there is another depiction of a blonde sorceress who is also hooded and wielding a wand that looks just like the one from the previous image. The first image portrays this woman as kind and generous, while the second one shows a much darker portrayal of this character. Like I mentioned earlier, this could be the depiction of Morgana's good versus evil duality. This dark witch is also surrounded by two dragons. And then we can see this image of a kneeling person who is surrounded by some type of runic magic. I was actually able to translate some of these runes. So let's begin. Here we have Gebo, which means sacrifice followed by Fehu, which means new beginnings or transfers of power. Then we have Manaz, which means spiritual transcendence. Then we have Fehu again, followed by Kenaz, which means transformation. Isa, paralyzed or not moving. And Ingus, which means creation, transformation or ritual. On the very bottom, on the ground, we see additional runes. Here we have Ewas, which means trust, loyalty, or two entities working together to reach a mutual objective. The last one I could translate was Ridaho, which means transport or movement. Overall, this potentially means a ritual is happening where some sort of power exchange was conducted, where the receiver of this power gets elevated and becomes more powerful. This image, we see a group of possible wizards wearing black robes with these pointy hoods. Items that are reminiscent of the Death Eaters from the Harry Potter movies. The interesting bit here is that we see one character who is different than the rest, a hooded figure holding a round object of sorts. This figure is also the only one who's not wearing a pointy hood. Would this person be Morgana from these images? It is a small detail, but her hood is not pointy. Now, I don't want to go too crazy with this observation, but if we look back at the history of symbolism, we realize that an upward triangle 
normally refers to the sacred masculine or these pointy hoods, referencing these people as potentially male followers, while the sacred feminine has been represented by an upside down triangle, also represented by this woman's hood that is not pointy. And if I were to dive even deeper, according to the alchemy of the divine, we could see that the sun or the sacred masculine is represented by men, also fire. And the moon or the divine feminine or sacred feminine is represented by water or the upside down triangle. And according to this image, we can see above Merlin the image of the sun and above Morgana the image of the moon. And according to the Seal of Solomon, when we merge these two symbols together, we have the light solar or masculine joined with a dark lunar feminine, like yin and yang, as above, so below. So is Hogwarts Legacy trying to represent the duality of the world? There is no light without dark. There is no above without below. There is no Merlin without Morgana. The interesting bit here is that we're also going to be able to have two different endings, a good ending or a dark ending. I know, I know, it's a little bit of a crazy interpretation, but this is a fact in the symbology field, and I just thought to share this with you. But wait, there's more. During the State of Play review, our avatar is walking around the room of requirement when I spotted these two open books. Turns out, it's the same images we were just analyzing. Additionally, this page depicts an image of a figure holding on to something, and many figures behind it all wearing black robes with pointy hoods, characteristics that we clearly see in this conceptual art. This raises many questions. Why are we studying these images? Is this location somewhere near Hogwarts? Is this in Avalon, and are we going to be able to go there? There's another connection I'd like to make. According to the Arthurian legends, King Arthur was searching for the Holy Grail. The interesting bit here is that we spotted a grail of sorts on this image. Could that be the Holy Grail itself? But how did the Holy Grail come to the hands of Morgana Le Fay? Simple. According to the Arthurian legend, the island of Avalon, Morgana's domain, was located to where Glastonbury in Somerset, England is today. Some tales confirm that a follower of Jesus Christ, Joseph of Arimathea, used the Holy Grail to collect Jesus' blood after the crucifixion. After Jesus was buried, Joseph traveled to England with the Holy Grail and the blood of Christ, and interestingly enough, he ended up in Glastonbury, or Avalon, as it was known then. It is written that after he arrived there, he was exhausted and planted his staff in the ground. From the staff burst a thorny bush, very much like this picture here. And look, she's also missing a staff. Could this be a reference to Joseph of Arimathea's staff? In this image, we spot the grail and a drop of blood above it. But why would Morgana Le Fay need the holy grail and the blood of Christ? And I know I've been talking a lot about Jesus Christ here, but in some stories, Jesus Christ is also revered or looked upon as a wizard, a being who was able to connect the celestial power to humanity itself. Additionally to being represented as an evil being, Morgana Le Fay was said to have fallen in love with one of the knights of the round table, Sir Lancelot. Her unrequited love brought her so much anger that Morgana ended up cursing not just Lancelot, but all of the knights of the round table. Could these stone knights be the cursed knights locked up in this area? Could the M in these chambers represent Morgana and not Merlin? I know there is this massive statue of a bearded wizard, probably Merlin, in this room, but he doesn't necessarily look happy. He looks almost as if he is in prison or in a submissive position looking down at this pensive object. My fellow Aurors, I know these theories seem a bit crazy, but if you'll indulge me a little bit more, I'll point out a few other things. There are many scenes in the trailer where we see many shields, crests, and flags. I think these could easily be the crests from the Knights of the Round Table. Let's check this image now. 
we see a lot of shields and crafts that could very well represent the knights. The interesting bit here is that we have the images of the sun and the moon on this door, astrological symbols that could be directly connected to Merle and Morgana, and we can actually spot both the sun and the moon in various images from the Hogwarts Legacy trailers. Is Merlin represented by the sun and Morgana the moon? If yes, why does this lock contain both symbols one atop of another, as if Morgana and Merlin worked together? The many different versions of the Arthurian legends could prove it difficult for Hogwarts Legacy to cover all of the varying aspects of the story. Avalanche could easily take all of the story's content or just parts of it in order to make their own main quest. Proven by the many similarities we have seen in this video, I do think we will see a lot of nods to the Arthurian legends. Maybe we should bug Sir Cadogan about Merlin and Morgana, as he was one of the knights of the round table back then. I am sure he'll be very happy to tell us some stories. Also, why was he the only one to have survived? This brings us to the end of this video, and please don't forget to let me know your thoughts on my crazy theories and stop being a muggle. Go like and subscribe to alert the ministry you want more content. I have a lot more crazy theories to share. But until then, mischief managed.